Welcome back to another episode of the Corporate Cowboys Podcast. This is your host, Alex. Today's date is Friday, October 7, 2022. And this will be another 30-minute consultation. I'm going to rip it right off of Reddit. R slash career advice. And in this one, they are actually asking for advice. Not for themselves, but for their father. Their father, who's middle-aged. Middle-aged. So, this is a uh, a younger poster seeking advice for their older father. Let's go ahead and get started. So my, and they are a 22-year-old female, my dad, who is a 50-year-old male, and th- these are all in parentheses, you know how they do, they go 22F and 58M. So my dad can't get a corporate job despite really wanting one, and it is very painful to watch. Any advice on how to help him? <laughs> Get a corporate job at 58. Bro, if you don't already have corporate experience at 58, if you haven't been keeping up with what corporate is doing in that time, and at 58, now you want to get a job in corporate, you're better off just being a corporate cowboy, an independent contractor of some sort. If you have expertise in an area, you have just as much probability, you know, rolling the dice And going out on your own, being a 1099 and charging handsome amounts for your knowledge and know-how as you do starting in corporate and moving up. Because the risk slash stability, I think, are going to be both relatively balanced. You might have stability, the appearance of stability, working in corporate, showing up for a salary position. 9 to 5, maybe 9 to 6, possibly 8 to 6, depending on how high up there or how low on the totem pole you are. But at 58, you run the risk of just being excused, being laid off for someone who is younger, for someone they can pay less, for someone who doesn't have 22-year-old kids, right? For someone who doesn't have children, young children, mouths to feed, might not have a lot of <clears throat> life expenses. Let's see what they're asking here. My father is turning 59 in February. February. He was a stay-at-home dad for most of me and my sister's childhood. The poster is 22 and the sister's 20. So he was out of the workforce for around 20 years. He has two master's degrees, but they are unfortunately from DeVry University. He got them back in 2006, 2008. He is a part of the generation that easily bought into scams like that and also really values having a corporate nine to five. Before me and my sister came along, he was a project manager for Home Depot for a while, but That was back in 2003. My father still, sorry, my family still feels the pain of the massive amounts of debt slash student loans he took on to try and get that education. He interviews for these corporate roles at places like Walmart or Nordstrom, but can never seem to land the job. He does get called back for second interviews at times. I can see the lack of success in the job world really weighing down his confidence over time. Especially, especially, especially when my mom, his wife, just landed her dream role and we uprooted and moved over halfway across the country for it. It is heartbreaking to watch my father try and try and never get anywhere. He had one job recently where he was a manager for a location of a security company, and I think he really liked it. But he had to move, so he has to sort of start from scratch. Sorry, but we had to move. But we had to move, so he has to sort of start from scratch. 
The company has the company. I'm having issues reading today. I'm having difficulties reading today. That's odd. But we had to move, so he has to sort of start from scratch. The company was a national company, but it is not popular in our new town like it was in our old town. Right now, he sells guns at Cabela's as an associate, but I don't think he likes it. He would feel better about himself in at least a manager position. What advice would you give someone like him? Are there things I can do or tell him to do so he can maybe better his chances? I was thinking of asking him if he wanted to try some mock interviews or something, but I'm only 22 and still in college. Not so, not like I have a ton of experience landing and interviewing for bigger roles anyways. Thanks for the advice, y'all. I'm open to all suggestions. Have a nice day. All right, check me out. Your pops is 58, right? Your pops is about to turn 59, married to your mother. Your mother is obviously a successful professional. Well, don't know if they're a professional, but they are very successful. They land their dream job. I'm going to guess, let me see here, a master's in what? What did he get a master's in? Master's degree, but they're from DeVry. We don't know what his master's degrees are in. Uh, they could be... Again, I don't want to draw conclusions, but they could be in liberal arts, a master's degree from DeVry University. Do you want me to break open Google right now and find out what master's degrees were being offered at DeVry University from that span of 2000, what was it, 2004, 2010? Because he got his in 2006, 2008. I could do it. I could break it open, find out whether or not they were even offering technical degrees and if they weren't well your pops has pretty much dug his own grave as far as the degrees go because he had to take out loans and now he's saddled with all of this student loan debt which is a bitch and a half to have at the age of 58 now you my dears have a father who is trying to make the best of a situation in which he doesn't have the best hand to play with, right? He got dealt a pretty serious hand. He has a successful wife. So even though there may be some stability in the household, the family life component, his identity as a figurehead, right? It doesn't have to be like the head of the family, right? It it could be a shared position. I do believe in that. Whether or not uh, the parents are, are carrying their relationship half and half, but putting in 100% each, right? But his esteem, his self-esteem as a figurehead in the family, negatively impact. And I could, and I, I could understand I could resonate with that. I could see that. And I'm sure you see that as well, which is why you're posting it on Reddit and asking for this advice. What you could tell them to do is not give up, obviously. I ran into folks his age. I ran into folks younger than him who I don't think had had the successes that he has. Two kids going through college, two girls growing up and becoming young women and making something something of themselves as well. He ought to be proud of that fact, at least. And that may have been an arrangement that he and his wife had previously where his wife would go on and work in the professional world. If that's the sort of arrangement they came up with, right? It's not traditional. It's slightly unconventional, but it worked until now. Now he wants to enter the field. Now he wants to enter the killing field. After 20 years of being out of the game, of course he's going to be rusty. Of course he doesn't know where where to start. That's 20 years of innovation, 
of, of tech, technology and digitalization that he may or may not have been keeping tabs on and staying abreast with, keeping up with. So, of course, he's going to lag in those departments. He's going to lag. There is a difference between managing people and managing business, especially in corporate. There's a service side and there's the operation side, at least that's my understanding of it. And since I was very young, that's how I was introduced to it. It Hasn't failed me since, but that understanding that I took away from it also let me know that there are some people in both those fields who only got to the position that they're in because of seniority. And even they don't keep up with technology. Even they don't keep up with innovative concepts of business to be able to create more business. They might be much more comfortable just keeping to the status quo and not changing a thing. That is hard to inculcate into an aging person, a mind that's already lost a significant amount, that may have lost, you know, I'm not going to completely bury your father, right? But that may have lost a significant amount of elasticity. It might, might not be as moldable as they were when they were 18, 19, 20, 22, like you and your sister are. But you're already showing signs of wisdom. Wisdom that your father might have passed down. You recognize you're young. You don't have the experience to directly help your father because you lack, you know, real world practice as to how to conduct a mock interview. Maybe you don't know exactly what goes into a resume yet. Maybe your father doesn't know where to start as far as using the resources he has in front of him now. Maybe they need somebody that they can talk to, a consultant of some kind, a corporate cowboy. Tell them to get in touch. Reach out to somebody who could lend them a hand, give them an idea, spark a fuse. Hopefully inspire, bring out that aspiring professional that he he's looking to become. It's difficult to get started at an older age because that's when you recognize that you can't settle. You should have never settled, right? And now, now I'm speaking directly to your father. You should have never settled, right? But obviously, you're not going to forsake your daughters, your family, your wife like that. Nah. You just have to recognize that you can't give up. You have to hustle. The same hustle you had when you were a young father. Wanting to be the best so that your family, so that your girls could be the best. You have to still be the best, man. You can't give up. Get in touch with us. We're on Instagram, Corporate Cowboys. Patreon page is out there. The Corporate Cowboys podcast. I'm not saying I'm going to solve all of your problems. Just spark a fuse. That's all. Hopefully spark your mind. Get your imagination. Get your creativity working. So that you know what you're going up against in corporate. Obviously, I would need to be in contact and interact with the father to know, you know, what experiences they have and what industry, what their degrees are, what kind of, what kind of asset they stand to be or potentially a liability Right? But because I'm not fucking hiring them, I could tell them to their face. 
what kind of liability they might be so that they could act preemptively and mitigate that from ever happening. That's the benefit of having a professional consultant, a career consultant, someone who could give you good advice. Let's take a look at some of these comments. Some of them are arguably going to say, oh, get him started on his on his resume. <laughs> get him started on his resume. But, you know, again, having 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 these young girls, having these young ladies relay that to their father. Dad, have you thought about working on a resume would more than would more than likely just frustrate the father because they're already in a position where they've been applying. They've been interviewing. So who's to say what kind of efforts they've expended, what kind of energy they've put out researching resumes, researching how to interview, right? And corporate might not even be the right fit for them. Notice how I didn't say they might not be the right fit for corporate. It's obvious he wants to get in the game. He's, he's, I mean, he might not be eager to sign on the dotted line, but it doesn't sound like they're destitute, right? The wife, the the mom has got their dream job. They all live together. Seems somewhat nucleic, somewhat nuclear family. They haven't strained and fallen apart. Though I'm sure there are struggles, no doubt. I'm sure there are some very serious discussions and conversations that happen. Maybe he has a better idea for what to do in corporate, in a corporation that he applies in. There's got to be a reason. There's there's got to be the smallest reason why he would choose to apply to Walmart or why he would choose to apply to Home Depot or choose to apply to, what was the other one? Nordstrom. And he works at Cabela's now. What's to say that down the line, he can't set himself apart from those around him and move up if that's what he really wants? You know what that takes, right? It takes tenacity. It takes not giving up. It takes realizing the fact that he is in a market competing with other 20-something, 30-something Yes, even 40-something-year-old professionals who might have more degrees, who may have more experience. And again, it's not discounting the experience your father already has. He has you. He has your sister. He has a family. In my book, that is success. What he wants to do is be able to build on that success, create an additional legacy, Why? Because humans are never satisfied. That's why your mother just got her dream job as well. And if if she's anywhere in the age range of your father's, well, she hasn't stopped moving. So, of course, your father doesn't want to stop moving either. What I mean by moving is making moves, moving up, fucking up corporate, killing the game, being a corporate cowboy. The first comment Suggests, well, I tell him to forget about the big companies and take a calculated step back, in quotes, it says here, step back, before pursuing a management role. He needs relevant recent experience to connect his ability to a prospective employer. He should identify jobs he wants and isn't getting. Identify a job that will create a bridge to those types of jobs. The nice thing about local companies is that you can often Actively take on more responsibility and build up your resume versus a corporate job where your role is kind of your role. For example, if he wants to work for a power tool company, work for a local company that sells power tools in a customer-facing role. The barrier to entry is low and there is always need. Gradually ask for more responsibilities like purchasing, merchandising, deliveries, or whatever. Then apply to the power tool company. Now he has relevant experience. And then somebody comments, hold on, hold on. Somebody comments below them. 
that this is from OP that he interviews for these company corporate roles at places like Walmart or Nordstrom, but can never seem to land the job. He does get called back for second interviews at times. And they say he's getting interviews for the jobs he wants. His problem isn't experience. They wouldn't interview him if that was the case. The guy probably sucks at interviewing. Most 50 plus people are just terrible at interviewing. When they ask him his greatest weakness, I'm betting he's answering honestly. Huh, huh. Okay, okay, okay. So there are a lot of moving parts here. The first person is saying, tell that fool to go entry level and work up the experience because he's been out of the game for so long. And I kind of did soft pitch that, right? Because they've been out of the game for so long. They're at a job now. They're at Cabela's where they could build on that experience and move up. It's going to take time. It's going to take time regardless. But this other fool saying, what, fucking leave Cabela's and go do something else? Nah, man, he's already a sales associate. Maybe he makes commission. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he wants to. Maybe he could go into guns, right? But then moving from there to a gun manufacturer, to a more regulated industry, that's going to, you know, that's going to be a pain because those industries tend to. Uh, to have not a lot of turnover, if, if I understand correctly. Not a lot of turnover towards the top, towards the top end, like corporate, those corporate positions. It's possible, but you become a manager, even a supervisor, something, something you can leverage, something you can leverage within a short amount of time. And again, this takes tenacity. This takes drive and motivation. So you have to do the shit moving. Sir, you have to hustle. You get the experience short term at Cabela's. You move up into a supervisory position. You don't even have to become a manager, per se. Just a supervisor. So you have hands on the safe. You have hands on the inventory, on the stocking, on the delivery. You manage a small crew of some kind, right? That way you can put those things down on your resume. And when it comes time to interviewing, you're able to speak on those features in your skill set. And as far as answering honestly, there's nothing wrong with answering honestly, especially if you're especially if you're 50. This person is saying that a lot of 50 plus people are just terrible at interviewing. I'm not going to say terrible at interviewing. They're honest. I think what a lot of older people suffer from is a sense of entitlement. That because they've been around for so long, they want the benefit of seniority without actually having put in work at that company they're interviewing in to even qualify for seniority. Nah. Seniority comes with experience. Seniority comes with reputation. You, sir, are a comet are like an asteroid flying through space, moving through atmosphere, and leaving a trail. Leaving a comet's trail of dust and ice, right? And depending on how long you've been in the game, that tail is longer and longer. It could be brighter, it could be dimmer, right? What you want to do is set yourself apart. You want to shine bright. You've been out 20 years and now what, in six months, you want to be working in corporate, having started from the bottom? If you didn't think of attacking corporate directly, starting entry level is not going to get you there in six months. It might not even get you there in a year. Now, I'm being cynical, but I'm being real. I've seen the kind of progress that you hope to obtain. I've seen it before. It's miraculous. It's something supernatural, almost otherworldly. I actually work with an associate. I work with an associate in the past who got hired on entry level, became a manager in six months, and in two years was working in corporate, became an area manager. That's fucking hustling. Now, this guy was about 30. But still, it could be done. 
it could be done at your age. But you have to understand that the odds are stacked that much more against you. Sure, you might have life experience. You might have experience dealing with young, adolescent, teenage, young adult, adult females as daughters. Maybe you were the kind of stay-at-home dad who attended PTA meetings, was very involved in the community. And I hope, I hope that experience served to, to socialize and network and not, not grow a sense of entitlement. I find that usually the sense of entitlement comes from old fucks already in corporate who then get asked out, get, get kicked out on their ass one day to the next. And when they go to apply for a job, that sense of entitlement comes out because they were a manager at their previous position. They quote unquote deserve management in the new one. Now, again, given your situation, I don't know you personally. I would love to hit us up. You want to write to us? P.O. Box 3372 Rancho Cordova, California 95741. Let us know. Become a pen pal. I mean, expect an invoice, but become a pen pal. I'd love to talk to you. Somebody else here comments. Temp agencies are your best friend with things like this sometimes. A lot of companies will go through them rather than hiring themselves, and you would be surprised how many are willing to train people themselves. I do think he may have to settle for a smaller position instead of management, but I absolutely think he can get his foot in the door of a corporate office. He would probably just have to start small like a data entry or accounts payable slash receivable. He just has a large gap and things may have changed a lot. So companies may not feel as confident hiring him for a higher role and may just want to make sure he has the knowledge. I'm no manager or anything. I just got my foot in the door of an office myself two weeks ago from being a retail slash food service since I ever started working. Since since I ever started. I'm no manager or anything. I just got my foot into the door of an office myself two weeks ago from being in retail slash food service since I ever starting working. Okay. That they messed up writing that started started working. I think you just have to find the right place that's willing to train. I hope this helped at least a little bit. I feel for him. I know how bad I wanted to get to where I am now and how depressed I got whenever I was rejected for not having the experience. <clears throat> a very well-intentioned comment. And that's just an additional resource going to temp agencies. And that's true. Some temp agencies will hire you, especially if you show that you lack the experience. You lack the the requisite work experience, especially for a typical field that you want to get into, even entry level. A lot of companies require data entry and accounts payable slash receivable to some extent, even if you're working... uh, business to customer or business to business, right? Now, again, we don't know the extent of the man's experience, um, how much he's retained or how much he's been able to work through his own past uh, curricula vitae, right? Um, His own resume, his own skill set in the past in order to to modernize them and in order to bring them in to literally the 20 no well no it's the 20 it's still the 21st century because the girls were born in like what 03 or some shit um we don't know what he's done right he may or may not still have some sharpness to him that comes along with that rust that just has to be knocked off or could require a complete new reprofiling to you know to get that bleeding edge back notice how i don't say fucking uh razor's edge nah 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 we we deal with bleeding edges out here in corporate so again i'm just i'm i'm using those demonstrative words those words that illustrate 
extreme words, very descriptive. Why? Because corporate is a colorful place, man. It's extreme. It's a place of extremes and it requires individuals who don't fold. It requires individuals who don't bend. It requires individuals who are still flexible, if that makes sense. It requires individuals who are still willing to learn, obviously, who are willing to hustle and don't take any fucking prisoners. Because there are also, like I said, those managers who've been with the organization for plenty long and they're on the leadership circuit, they're on the executive board, they're 50, they're 60, they might be fucking 70 years old and they don't know how to use Microsoft Outlook, right? Is that your fault? No, it's not. But you have to come to terms with the fact that when you are starting from the bottom, if you aren't infiltrating the bitch already, if you're not infiltrating corporate as an independent contractor of some kind, a corporate cowboy, if you haven't found a way to provide a professional service on your own and you know get paid out on the side so you can still work from home technically, if you really want to sign the dotted line, you ought to know what comes with the territory. I'm just being honest. I wish you the best, sir. I really do. And for this young lady who brought this question to r slash career advice, I also wish you the very best, you and your family. Have a nice weekend.